What makes a rock skip across the surface of the water? What size and shape work best? I'm Professor Tad Truscott, and today we're talking about the science of the skip here at our BYU Splash Lab. Here in our Splash Lab at the BYU Mechanical Engineering Department, we study fluid dynamics using high-speed imaging. The world record for the number of skips is 51, held by Russell Byers. My personal best is 12. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Let's talk about the science of rock skipping. The first thing you need is a lake, or a large body of water, of course. And the second thing you need is a great rock. And this rock is both flat and somewhat round. You want to throw it sidearm, and as you whip your arm around, you let it roll off the tip of your fingers. You give it a try. <laughs> Check out this shot here at our BYU Splash Lab. It's shot at 1,000 frames per second. As the rock comes down into the water, it creates this cavity, which it rides on, and the pitch angle creates a lifting force, which causes it to rise up again before it starts to descend to the next skip. You might think that this is all fun and games, but Splash Science has real application in industry. That was a good one. In fields like energy, transportation, and medicine. We work with the Navy a lot, and of course, they're always looking for different methods and ways to travel across the water. If you can design a craft that can move across the water's surface in a manner that's a bit smoother and has less transitions in G-force, and maybe the best way to do it is to skip across the surface, then you can remove some of the possibilities for people to get back and neck injuries. These two rocks, you may think can't be skipped, but they actually can do an overhand throw this time as hard as you can at a very high angle, like 45 degrees or so, and then you're gonna let it roll off your fingertips, and that backspin is gonna create a lifting force, and so it will go underwater, and then the lift force will drive it to the surface again, and it will pop out of the surface, and your friends will scream, they'll be so excited. So in our lab, we don't just use rocks, we often use other types of objects, and this is one we use a lot. It's called a water bouncing ball, Waboba for short. And these balls are very elastic. What this elasticity does is remove the need to have a very accurate pitch angle. The Waboba takes care of that by flattening out in the right position as it moves through the cavity. Because it is elastic and because the fluid can be moved around, they interact with one another, causing interesting shapes and waves to form. Our preferred method of shooting Wobobas is out of a t-shirt cannon. Three, two, one, fire! I'm Tad Truscott from the BYU Splash Lab, hoping your summer's filled with a little bit of rock skipping and a lot of science and discovery. 51 skips, yes! <laughs>